We need to have a talk. So another mass shooting claimed the lives of nearly 50 innocent people, mostly Americans, we presume, at a gay nightclub in Orlando, Florida. Now, these victims were shot by a man with alleged radicalized ties to Islam, which is completely shocking because when I first saw the breaking news on cable TV, I had just assumed it was another case of a deranged Mennonite or Wiccan ideologue out there causing trouble and sacrificing innocent souls for an afterlife of candlelight and fine brooms. I mean, who would have thought a man of Middle Eastern origin that practices Islam would end up being the perpetrator? The United States is the melting pot of the world. It's what makes us special, but it's also what causes some friction that most other countries are not exposed to. See, we're a nation of immigrants, mostly legal ones at the beginning, but a remarkable percentage of trespassers in recent years. And as our diversity becomes a majority of minority majorities, the ability for all these different cultures and traditions and religious backdrops and languages to just assimilate into the traditional American culture becomes more difficult. Unfortunately, we're a nation that wants to be everything to everybody, and it's a promise we cannot deliver on, nor should we really be expected to. We all know the saying, when in Rome, do as the Romans, but when in America, it's do as you please, even if it means rejecting everything about America that once glued us together. We are no longer Americans, but hyphenated Americans. The oppressive, totalitarian, corrupt, educationally bankrupt, third-world shitholes in front of the hyphen seem just as important as the open arms of Lady Liberty, caretaking the world's tired, poor, huddled masses yearning to breathe free beyond the hyphen. Turn on the TV and watch the Mexican national soccer team playing in the U.S. There's 80,000 people in the stands waving Mexican flags, wearing green, oftentimes rooting against the United States, the country they were willing to risk their lives to illegally escape into for the hope of a better life. They still want to be more Mexican than American, and many other cultures feel and act the same way. So what can you and I do about it? Well, there's two things. The first, call out the nonsense for what it is. We're surrounded by the nonsense of safe spaces, trigger warnings, microaggressions, and the threat of being called a racist for even the smallest non-infraction that causes someone to rethink their own position. I mean, it's pretty hard to fight terrorism, never mind radical Islamic terrorism, when you're not allowed to say radical Islamic terrorism. If our president can't say it, you know, the commander in chief of thousands of aircraft, warships, intelligence operatives, and foot soldiers, then how can that be measured as a position of strength in fighting the problem? And can we bury the, if you see something, say something bullshit? If you see something and you say something and it has anything to do with a hyphenated American, you're automatically a racist and just asking for a social media beatdown. A left-handed, transgendered, one-legged, obese Eskimo could walk into a 7-Eleven with dynamite strapped in their mucklucks and their body if you point them out, you're a profiling bigoted jerk invading their safe space who doesn't understand what it's like to be singled out. Now for a piece of advice. Arm yourself. If you're not armed, get armed. And if you already are, start stockpiling because we are frogs in a boiling pot. Every day our rights, freedoms, and liberties are being stolen from under the false pretense of safety and security. So empower yourself while you still can to love the odds as best you can. There's never going to be a more passionate or convenient advocate for your own self-defense than you. You're the first line, the second line, and oftentimes the last line. Own a gun because you cannot own a cop. Be vigilant and protect yourself. Don't be a vigilante now. Firearms are serious business. They're not for John Wayne types, but when the only thing stopping a psychopathic killer from carving you up is a bathroom door, eh, fighting back is really the only chess move left on the table, and your negotiating skills aren't gonna talk your ass out of being dead as fried chicken. There's a reason nobody walks into a VFW or American Legion post and starts trouble because they know everybody is packing. Murderers go where the soft targets are. Gun-free zones are free kill zones, and almost without exception, every mass killing begins and ends in one. Luby's Cafeteria, Columbine, Aurora, Colorado, Virginia Tech, Fort Hood, Chattanooga, Charleston, San Bernardino, Orlando. Every one of those locations was a soft target where firearms were prohibited, and the law-abiding were disarmed and helpless to fight back. The criminals have guns, many of them illegally obtained. You cannot put the toothpaste back in the tube. And since they aren't laying down their arms, neither should you. Listen, we don't take all the cars away because a handful of drunk drivers kill innocent people. We don't force General Motors to stop building 600 horsepower Corvettes because nobody needs to drive 200 miles per hour to get to work. We have all the laws we need already on the books. If someone tries to buy a firearm and doesn't pass the background check, charge them, convict them, and punish them. 
Yet despite tens of thousands of background check denials, only a few dozen have ever been held accountable. That's not a law problem. That's an enforcement problem. If someone has terrorist sympathies, charge them with something. That act alone will halt their ability to purchase a firearm. But secret, nefarious, government-controlled lists of suspicious names is not the answer. Nobody knows how you get on the list. Nobody knows how you get off the list. Hell, most people don't even know if they were on the list or not. You cannot suspend someone's constitutional rights for anything just because you've compiled a list of names. There's a thing called due process, you know, the right to hear the accusations brought against you in a public setting, the right to refute those charges and correct your good name, the right to counsel, to assist in redressing your grievances in a courtroom. Uh, the Nazis had lists of names back in World War II. Is that the direction we want to go? But the insanity doesn't end there. Our politicians uh, and the media go positively apeshit when we lump all Muslims into one category as dangerous Neanderthals, as they should. We're told to acknowledge the vast majority of Muslims that are kind, peace-loving citizens that do no harm. Yet, when a deranged asshole grabs a gun and shoots up a nightclub, the same people refuse to make the same distinction between the overwhelming majority of responsible, peace-loving gun owners and a random deranged asshole with a gun. See, we're told not to punish Muslims as a whole for Islamic extremism, but we're expected to surrender our constitutional rights as a whole for deranged asshole with a gun extremism. Um, arguing that ridiculous reasoning is like playing tennis on both sides of the net. And since I'm on a roll here, I'll tell you another thing that's pissing me off. The murdered victims in Orlando weren't even buried, yet Obama, who never wanted to let a grandstanding opportunity go by the wayside when dead bodies are still hot to the touch, flew into town and made yet another plea to get scary-looking guns off the street. See, he never suggested getting scary people off the streets, just the things they carry. Now, it's funny how important gun control is to Obama when there's a mass shooting. One mass shooting is too many, we all ag agree on that, but as a whole, mass shootings remain extremely rare. You stand a better chance of dying from a bee sting than being killed in a mass shooting, but I do find it interesting that Obama never flies to his hometown of Chicago to talk about gun violence when that city is engaged in a genocide of biblical proportions nearly every weekend of the year. The number of dead in the Windy City towers over all the mass shootings combined. Yet, the families of those killed in Chicago receive no crawler at the bottom of the TV, no White House press conference, and certainly no visit from Barry and Uncle Joe. The cherry picking of the dead is not just wrong, it is sick and it's twisted. But we know the reason why, as long as blacks continue to kill one another, onesie twosie style, it's an acceptable outcome even if the total number of combined dead is astronomical. Could there be anything more disgusting and bigoted than that? In the minds of our sick and twisted leaders, 100 dead and two combined shootings of 50 each is far worse than 500 dead from 500 random shootings in 500 different exposed locations. Somehow your life is worth less when you're forced to die alone. Minority and low-income communities are places where firearms are needed most for personal defense. Yet these are the places where they're almost difficult to get. Where's the fucking logic in that? These people are being slaughtered and they're trying to defend themselves with wooden spoons from the kitchen. If Obama and his henchmen were truly after a reduction in violent gun deaths, then they would focus on handguns because handguns account for nearly 90% of all gun deaths to begin with. If you disagreed on that platform, at least you could concede that they were focusing on the firearms responsible for most of the gun deaths. But instead of focusing on rifles and long guns, it's proof the president and his party aren't interested in the greatest good because they're focusing on the wrong guns. See, not only is their constitutional argument bankrupt, but their moral and their logical argument doesn't pass the smell test either. The bottom line is this. When a bully throws a stone, the only way to fight back is to throw a bigger stone. You can't remove all the stones in the schoolyard and disarm the bully, but you can hit him between the eyes with a fist-sized rock you found laying next to the school teacher's foot. It's when that school teacher lets you throw it that you know you've won. Because winning is just not hitting dead center mass with a perfect throw. It's the message attached to the rock that convinces bullies like him to think twice about throwing rocks too. Now it's your turn. Tell me what you think. Post your questions and comments below. Please share and like this video if you liked it. Dislike it if you disliked it. And subscribe if you haven't already so you never miss an episode.